Welcome. Welcome to this moment of prayer hosted by The Upper Room. I'm Kara Lassen Oliver, Executive Director of the Center for Christian Spiritual Formation. In previous months, the Upper Room would gather in the chapel every Wednesday to pray with and on behalf of the world. During these uncertain times, we are gathering together virtually for this moment of prayer. As a staff member here at the Upper Room, I speak for myself and for so many of us who are grateful to be partners with you in this journey, praying virtually together. We have been privileged to pray with you each day, and I know it has supported me, deepened my faith, and hopefully all of our resilience as in these, dip, in these very difficult and uncertain times. Starting today, we are shifting our prayer time to Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, still at 11 a.m. Central Time, and we look forward to being with you each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Wherever you are right now, in your home, at work, in a hospital room, maybe some of you are even in your car, whether you are alone today or with others, know that God is with you right here, right now. And we hope that you will continue to share your joys and your concerns with us here as we continue to build this upper room community. So as we begin this moment of prayer, I invite you to take some deep breaths, to breathe in the love of God and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and to breathe out tensions or worries or the busyness that has already been a part of your day today. And now let us pray together using the prayer from the uh, Upper Room Worship Book. New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors and all of your creation, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. When Jesus finished saying these things, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son can glorify you. You gave him authority over everyone so that he could give eternal life to everyone you gave him. This is eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. I have glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I shared with you before the world was created. I have revealed your name to the people you gave me from this world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. This is because I gave them the words that you gave me, and they received them. They truly understood that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I'm praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you gave me, because they are yours. Everything that is mine and your, is yours, and everything that is yours is mine. I have been glorified in them. I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world, even as I'm coming to you. Holy Father, watch over them in your name, the name you gave me, that they will be one just as we are one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm praying for them. That's what Jesus said. He said that we will remain in the world and that he is praying for us. These words give me great comfort today and in these times. Jesus is continuing to pray for us, 
for those of us in this world, in its uncertainty and in its beauty, as we're separated and connected in new ways, Jesus is continuing to pray for us. So this morning, I want to ask two questions and ask you to imagine how you are continuing to pray with Jesus who is praying for us. And how are you continuing to pray for those in your lives and in this world when we can't be together? I want to do that by sharing two stories. The first is about how I continue to pray with Jesus who's praying with me. At the upper room, in days gone by, every quarter, we would invite spiritual leaders and pastors from the Nashville community into the upper room for a time of Sabbath and reflection on scripture. Two years ago, after Easter, just about this time, Steve Bryant led that group in a scripture reflection on one of Jesus' resurrection appearances from John 21. You'll remember the story where Jesus is on the lake shore preparing breakfast for the disciples. And in that guided reflection, I saw myself sitting on a log by the fire on the lake shore with Jesus. In that guided reflection and in my time with Jesus, we didn't share any words. I just knew he was there present with me, listening to the longings of my soul, the groans too deep for words. And since that time two years ago, when I need to lay my burdens down, when I'm so emotional that the words don't come, when journaling or yoga or spiritual friends and conversation just aren't quite enough, I can go back into my imagination. I can sit on that same log, shoulder to shoulder, with Jesus, and it's enough. I know that Jesus continues to pray with me. So I wonder this morning, how do you go into God's presence? How can you remember in an intimate and a personal way that Jesus continues to pray for you and continues to pray with you? Where can you go in your divine imagination to be with Jesus and to hear the prayers that he offers for you? Maybe just take a moment to remember when you have felt that intimacy or what that place in your imagination looks like. The second story is about how I've learned to hold other people in prayer when I don't know how to pray for them. When I was a youth pastor, I was privileged to have Bishop Reuben Job as my spiritual director. He, we were members of the same local church and his grandchildren were in my youth group. But in my early 20s, in my first um, job as a pastor, I was really at a loss for how to hold the pains and the challenges of the young people in my ministry, and even more so the parents who were trying to parent them. And so I took this concern to Bishop Job, and he told me a story. He told me about the day that he brought that he and his wife brought their oldest daughter home from the hospital. And he assisted his wife into the front seat of their car and she was holding the baby because this was long before car seats. And as he assisted his wife and his new daughter into the car and saw how his wife was holding that baby so gently, so carefully, he knew in that moment how preciously God holds each of us. And so as he continued in his ministry, if he ever encountered a person or a situation that he didn't know how to pray for, he would imagine God holding that person or those persons as tenderly as his wife had held his daughter getting into that car. Well, so I tried to use that image when I didn't know how to pray, but you know, it didn't work because that, that was Reuben's image. That was his story. But the next year, our youth group went to Heifer Ranch in Arkansas. 
where each day the youth and the adults were assigned different chores on the ranch to help manage the gardens and the fields and the animals. And one of the nights there, there was a horrible rainstorm and all of the newly hatched chicks were drenched and almost drowned. So two of the youth and I were given towels and hair dryers and we were sent to the barn where these soaked and cold chicks were huddled under heat lamps. They were the most pitiful chicks that you ever saw. But we gently picked them up and toweled them and dried them and we warmed them carefully with the hair dryers praying that this would be enough to save these delicate lives. And then we had to go on to the next task, leaving them under the heat lamp. But we went back that evening and where the chicks had been huddled together and shivering and cold, we now found these fluffy chicks wandering around the pen, no longer needing that heat, light, that heat lamp. They were fluffy and strutting and healthy and warm and I had my image. That day at the Heifer Ranch was nearly 20 years ago but to this day when I don't know how to care for someone or even how to pray for them I can imagine them held, tended, warmed, and loved like those tender chicks and I can also remember that I'm not responsible not ultimately for any of the outcomes, but I can pray and I can tend, even without words and even without being present, which is a comfort, especially in these days. So I wonder this morning, what image or what experience do you have that reminds you of God's tender care and mercy how does that image allow you to draw people, the ones you love or strangers, the ones in your home or around the globe, how can that image draw them into your imagination and draw them into prayer? As we go into prayer today, which, which image do you need? Do you need to sit on a log quietly with Jesus and be comforted yourself? Or do you need to imagine a way to care for others, to join with God in that prayer? So take time to remember that image, that intimacy. Today, maybe even experiment with a new image and to see how that feels. As we go to God in prayer together, I'm going to be using a prayer written by one of our staff members, Migdiel Perez. He closed our staff meeting last week with this beautiful prayer, and so I want to share it with you. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you in moments full of anxiety about what may happen in the coming days and weeks. Shower us with the peace that Jesus promised to his disciples and make us into steady pillars for those around us. In this time of uncertainty and epidemic, wake us up to the reminder that we are not alone. Even as we are asked to keep our distance from others, help us to find ways to reach out to those who need our support. We pray especially for those whose incomes and livelihoods are threatened for the children who will miss meals due to school closures, for those already isolated, lonely, and scared. Loving God, give them your peace, and through our hands, ensure they have what they need. Sustain, strengthen, and protect all caregivers. Bless them as they offer compassionate care and show selfless courage in the face of risk. Remind us each time we wash our hands that in our baptism you call us to let go of our fears and live in joy, peace, and hope. All of these prayers and so much more we bring to you, O loving God. Our joys, our hopes, our fears, our pain, this world. 
We bring it all to you because we cannot carry it alone. As we join together in prayer, as Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, beloved, thank you for joining us today, for joining me today, and for the strength that this offers. Remember, starting today, we'll be shifting our moment of prayer to Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 11 a.m. Central Time. You are beloved. You are not alone. Go in peace. Amen.